do a bunch of examples where we multiply two binomials using FOIL. We're just going to practice. So in the example given here with just uh, four variables, we can say we're going to multiply them using FOIL. F stands for first, so A times C is the first, AC. Outside is A times D, F O is outside, that's A D. And then we switch to inside, which is B C. So that's I for inside, that's B C. And then the last is B times D, that's L for last, and that's B D. So we essentially are doing four multiplication steps. Let's do some examples. When you're getting started, it sometimes is helpful to actually write out the letters FOIL. So FOIL, also it's helpful to draw the lines, again, when you're starting out. X times X is X squared. X times 3 is a positive 3X. 5 times X is a positive 5X. And then lastly, 5 times 3 is 15. Now one thing you should notice is that 3X and 5X are actually like terms. This is going to happen most of the time when you have the same structure. In this case, it was an x plus a constant. And the other binomial was also an x plus a constant. So our final answer is actually going to be x squared plus 8x plus 15. Now, when you get used to doing these, you won't actually have to write out FOIL. You won't actually have to write out a 3x and a 5x. You'll just add that in your head, and you'll write out and 8x. Let's take a look at this next one. Again, f is y times y, which is y squared, o outside, y times negative 4, negative 4y, and then i inside is a positive 2y. Notice that I'm being very deliberate about writing the signs. And then last, l is a positive 2 times negative 4, which is a negative 8. Again, we have like terms. These are our like terms, a negative 4y plus 2y, so we end up with a y squared minus 2y minus 8. Final answer. The next one. Here we have two binomials, and they're both being subtracted. You're going to see something interesting with the L term. z times z is z squared. z times negative 2, that's outside, is a negative 2z. Inside is negative 5 times z, that is a negative 5z. And then last, negative 5 times negative 2. Be careful with this. A negative times negative is a positive. It's a positive 10. And again, you should notice that we have like terms here. Negative 2z minus 5z. Now a negative minus a number is a bigger negative. So my final answer is going to be z squared minus 7z plus so you really have to have your integer skills. You have to know how to multiply positives and negatives to get these answers correct. Now this is an interesting example in that it's the same binomial twice. In other words, it's a binomial squared, or a binomial times itself. Let's solve it the same way. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And then the inside, 3 times x is another 3x. And then the last is 3 times 3, which is a positive 9. Again, looking at our like terms, we have a plus 3x and a plus 3x. It's really the same thing. It's doubled. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now this is actually a perfect square binomial, or perfect square trinomial. It is a perfect square trinomial because it came from a binomial that was squared. How about this next problem? This next problem has something called conjugates. And conjugates are the same binomial, the identical binomial, however, one's an addition problem and the other is a subtraction problem. I'm not going to write the loops, but we'll do y times y is y squared. y times negative 5 is negative 5y y times plus 5 is a plus 5y, and then lastly, a plus 5 times a negative 5 is a negative 25. Now, one thing you'll notice here, again, we always, or not always, we almost always have like terms in the middle, 
here is a minus 5y and a plus 5y. And what is the answer to minus 5y plus 5y? This actually cancels out to be 0. So my final answer is just y squared minus 25. Notice it's no longer a trinomial. All the other examples were trinomials. This binomial has a very special name. It is called dots for a difference, which means a subtraction, difference of two squares. y squared is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So we call that dots. That'll be important when you learn factoring later on. Let's take a look at this one. What's different about this problem is that we're actually looking at two different variables. So f of foil is x times y, which is xy. Outside, f o, x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. Inside, 4 times y is a positive 4y. And then last is 4 times negative 3, which is a negative 12. Now, in a lot of the other examples, these were like terms. But in this example, these are unlike terms. So this is our final answer. Okay? This is our final answer. We cannot simplify it to a bi or I'm sorry, a trinomial. It is going to remain a perfect, I'm sorry, a quadrinomial, four-term polynomial. Now how about if we have coefficients? We haven't had any coefficients in front of the first term, but you just follow the rules. What's f? 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared. Outside, 3x times negative 5, that's negative 15x. Inside, 2 times 2x is a positive 4x. And then the last term, 2 times negative 5 is a negative 10. Now, because this had the same structure, something times x and then a constant, something times x and a constant, we actually do have these like terms, just like we had in many of the other examples. So our final answer will be 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. You got to be careful. You can add and subtract integers. Negative 15 plus 4 is a negative 11. That's our final answer. Now here's our last example. Please notice that I'm actually using two variables, but the two variables are in such a form that I have the same structure in both binomials. So 5x times x is a 5x squared. 5x times negative 4y is a negative 20xy. Again, x times y is xy. Inside is a positive xy. Positive y times positive x is positive xy. And then the last term, positive y times negative 4y, is a negative 4y squared. And true to form, because we have the same structure in both of these binomials, same structure, we actually have like terms, negative 20xy plus xy. So our final answer is 5x squared minus 19xy minus 4 y squared. Final answer. The way you get good at these is just by practice. You just simply need to practice by multiplying, multiplying, and multiplying more binomials. I've covered a number of the common things that will come up when you're practicing, but you genuinely do have to practice these on your own to get good at it. You can't just watch. You can't just watch a video of somebody else multiplying binomials. You're going to have to jump in and do it yourself. Okay? Good luck.